YouTube, I'm trying to do my Fulton J. Shin best impression. But I guess I'm not very good at being Fulton J. Shin. Uh, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, today, we're going to go back to Asheshe. Do you remember the microgrid I did? We did in 2021. Quick uh, brief overview. We installed 45 kilowatts in solar panels on three different roofs. We had um, 125, 125 kilowatt hours in Pylon Tech uh, batteries, the UP5000, and we had nine 8 kilowatt day inverters. Do you remember that? Remember the problems we had? Uh, well, let me give you a quick summary. We had initial problem we had where the cables getting too hot. They were too small. With your help, we figure out the cable size. Actually, no, that was the second problem. The first problem we had was trying to get the low voltage hub to communicate with the batteries. We struggled with that one. That one took us quite a while to get right. With your help, we resolved it. Then we had the cable issues. We had two 70 mm cables on each, on positive and negative, so a total of four. That was barely adequate. Once we piled the place up, the cables heated up. You could smell it. So we went to eight cables per positive and negative, and that resolved that issue. We had a thermal camera that allowed us to inspect um, to inspect for heat sources, and we didn't see any, so we're good there. So we resolved that issue. We powered the system up, it ran, and then the problem started. We had um, PV leakage, where one inverter went off because we had PV issues. Um, when we mentioned it today, they said, look at the solar panels. There were brand new solar panels. What could possibly cause PV leakage? Then we had um, issues where um, the inverter will have um, parallel, error connect parallel error faults. So one inverter will trip and everything will go off. Then we had to do firmware updates. If you recall, that brought the system down. We had to go and manually do firm individual firmware updates on the inverter and we're fine. Uh, what else did you experience? PV leakage. Um, oh, the most recent one was um, when they put on their generator to charge the batteries, the PV output breakers, the PV input breakers will trip. Oh, one problem. Remember we had to change our wiring, right? Because the cables, the cables we used from on the AC, AC side, AC input and AC output were 16 mm, they were too thick. So we had one terminal melt. We went back to what the factory recommended and we are fine. I don't know why we, what made us think that we needed that cables that big. First of all, each individual inverter could only output 8 kilowatts. So the cable recommendation by the manufacturer was more than adequate. But us, in our infinite wisdom, decided to think we knew better than they did. So that's an error we promise not to make again. So that was one. Then um, what else? PV leakage, um, breaker, oh, and the tripping. Before I tell you what we found out and how we resolve some of these issues, because last week was when we got a resolution, please subscribe. If you had subscribed, click the subscribe button one more time. I need to get to 3,000 and 3,000 is a magic number. So back to Asheshe. We found some things out where we're not quite sure if it's incompetence or a deliberate act by the facilities manager. And we're still not 100% sure. But there were things that were happening that made no sense. So let me give you an example of one. We built an AC panel. The AC panel had a big um, 250 amp breaker on the input side and 250 amp breaker on the output side. We had four cables. Four, four cables, I think it's one, two, three, four, four cables. And um, I'll put, post a picture on the input and the output. So our inverter input, our inverter imp input into the inverter, we had the cables. Output into the inverter, we had cables. One day, guess what? Mysteriously, one of the logged cables that had no tension on it pulled out. And guess who found it out? The facilities manager. What was he doing in that panel that's supposed to be closed? We have no clue. He didn't hear any sounds. He didn't see, the lights did not go off. But somehow he found a logged cable that pulled off and sent us a picture. So that was one. 
that was actually very recent. I think that was last week or the week before. Um, what other issues were having? The PV leakage issues. That one really threw us for a loop. We could not figure out what was going on. We inspected all our wires. We couldn't figure it out. So how did the PV leakage issue manifest? If you recall, the system was down for almost a week. And the reason it was down for a week was because when we turned the, in, the systems on, one inverter would go into fault. And I think it was inverter number eight. It didn't matter what we did, we couldn't resolve And we didn't think it was the PV causing it. We had PV leakage on inverter number three. It, it, we got an error, so we turned it off. But inverter number eight was not giving us an error. Well, um, we started to troubleshoot and we started to follow the cables back. And when the folks who were laying the drywall were drain, laying the drywall, they drilled a screw right through our cable. And that was what caused that problem on inverter number eight. Inverter number three, the problem was caused by them bringing a hot plate too close to our PV wires. They melted the insulation. They fixed it themselves without telling us. And that's how we got past the PV, uh, PV leakage errors we're seeing. So that's one issue of the plate. Second one we're experiencing was um, when the generators come on. The mini generator comes on and then the inverters qualify it. Uh, qualification means that it meets the frequency and the voltage. And then it allows it in. So what it does, it allows it in. Part of it goes to power the house, the other part goes to charge the batteries. Our AC input breakers will trip. So we had nine of them, one for each inverter, and they just go and all go off. He mentioned that he kept saying it was happening. And then I think my folks were there one time and they saw it happen. We told him that the only thing that's changed were the breakers. So the problem was the generator. For a month, he insisted that the problem wasn't the generator, that the problem was the inverter, the inverter was defective. Um, he didn't think we did a good job. The capacity we installed was wrong. Da, 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 da. But when I'm there, he wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that to my employees. So I showed up. We had a conversation. I said, you know what? We'll do this. Bring the manufacturer in. I'll talk today and tell them that these are the issues we're experiencing. If they can give us a solution to it. Or if we can, they could do a firmware update that allow us to dial down what the inverter tries to pull from the gem because it's looking at the dial, the grid dial, and it shows that it's pulling, it goes into the red zone, which means it's pulling over 7,000 watts. Pulling over 8,000 watts, I think it even pulls up to 10,000 watts. So between what it's putting into the batteries and what it's feeding into the house, each inverter was showing over 10,000 watts, which the inverter could handle. But when that happened, the breakers will pop. So when Meccano came, there's a 150 kVA Meccano generator with um, tossing told them what was going on. Actually, I told them what was going on, and I left. They started the generator, and then they turned it off for Mr. Mililil, and guess what they said? They are absolutely, absolutely correct. The problem is the generator. The facilities manager's jaw dropped because he was so sure the problem was us. It wasn't his generator. They said, generator doesn't have a governor. What the governor does, he controls the speed so it doesn't run away. The engine doesn't run away, and then, you know, weird things happen. So what happened is once it saw the charge come in, the engine will try to accelerate to compensate and it will send uh, more current than what our breakers could handle and boom, they will trip to protect the inverter. So that took care of that one. Um, it was amazing. We just kept going through each little thing. So the next one was the lights will be on and then they will blink and come on, blink and come on. And sometimes they'll blink and not come back on. And then one inverter will go into fault and bring everything. So we're getting overcurrent errors, overload, overload errors consistently with the system. I'd ask my people to go around and check the sockets, the outlets, you know, the light outlets to see if they saw things that they shouldn't see. Go and inspect air conditioners to see if you had one that had leakage. Um, being typical employees, they weren't as diligent. So last week, I think it was Wednesday, I went to the facility. And I went into the room where the facilities manager spends his time and stores his stuff. And you could see a, an induction hot plate with very thin exposed wires, no socket, plugged into the wall. With no plug, sorry. 
you didn't have a plug, it was just two very thin wires plugged into the outlet or the socket. And if you see burn marks on the wire, you could also see burn and smoke marks on the outlet or socket right next to it. And you go around and you see this repeat all over the room. They had a an iron, same issue. You could see, it was like, wow. This is what's been driving us crazy. We couldn't figure it out. This is why we had a meeting where they asked us to refund the money because the system was not performing. So when we isolated those, I recall when we shut down that side of the, that side of the, you know, we had um, our three phases. We shut down one of the phases. The system remained stable. The downside to it was ACs, our three phases wouldn't come on, and the water pumps, our three phases were not coming on. So we're like, wow. Now it turns into an argument and a fight. Facilities manager, we've told you, our system responds to this. Each time he sees it, he will shut off. He goes, while well, our systems are designed with breakers and breakers are supposed to arrest this, da 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 da. I said, you buy insurance. You buy life insurance, right? Not because you want to die. The reason you put life insurance is because if something bad happens, you know your family is protected. The reason you buy insurance for your car is because if something bad happens, you know that your car can be fixed or replaced by the insurance company. You don't buy it because you intend to crash it. And what you're telling me you're doing is you put those breakers because you intend to test them. They're supposed to be your last resort. Yes, your generator might not see them. Uh, your generator will continue to power through it till the breaker strip. The generator is done, but guess what? You do it enough time to generate a generator will fail. Our system sees it, responds even before the breaker strips, and turns off to protect itself and protect your facility. See, it wasn't getting through to me. We had the conversation, we just got tired of having the conversation. I was like, you know what? Do what you want. So we put something in writing stating, we don't want any bare wires being plugged into the outlets or sockets. Simple. And since Wednesday, we've not had a failure. The system has run with no problem. So the next step we're going to do is put someone there 24 hours a day for a minimum of one week to see if the items repeat. Now, one little caveat, and I want you to give your opinion as to what you think is really going on in that shishin, is that each time our system doesn't run, the generator runs. Generators use diesel. A supplier brings diesel, and guess who handles the supply of diesel? In the comment section, tell me who you think handles the diesel supplies and why you think that person might have... Well, tell me why you think the person who handles diesel supplies will have an incentive to let the system shut down. So that's it from Asheshe. Now we are in a place where we've made a conscious decision that we'll charge for video monitoring on any system we do going forward. We can see in real time what's going on. Oh, one last thing that I did not mention. We have 18 breakers. They're not in any sequence. They're input and output breakers. So the inverter input from the gen has a breaker, the inverter output into the build, into the facility has a breaker. This man knew which was which, and they would trip. How did he figure that out? We didn't label them, even I, Looking at them could not tell which was which, but he knew. He sent us a picture and I posted, Sir, this input breaker and that output breaker tripped. And we looked at ourselves and go, What the? Or what da? If you're from New York. So, post in the comment section below what you think is going on and how you would mitigate it or resolve it if you are in our shoes. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you're yet to subscribe, please click the subscribe button. I, I wait your comments and I hope from your feedback, I can get a solution that's lasting and permanent.